Now, you ran Canada Council in the 80s. Oh, that's, yes, that's uh, leaping away, I, uh, away ahead. I asked the question because I, I'd like to hear from you how public involvement in the arts, say through the Canada Council, how it can be important or how it can be destructive to a, to a culture, to a Canadian culture. Oh, tremendously. Ab absolutely tremendously because it gives, it, uh, gives voice to, to uh, the public uh, need for this kind of thing. Um, I, uh, I, I first turned this job down when John Roberts, the Secretary of State, offered it to me um, because, uh, again, I, I didn't think I was very good at politics. I didn't want to get involved in it. I was sick of it. Uh, but he then showed me the list of, came back to me a second time and showed me the list of the other possibilities if I declined. And every last one of them was a political appointment. Right. And that was when I said, oh, heck, all right. But I only took the job for three years instead of the customary five. I didn't want to get trapped in it. Um, but it was a fascinating time. We had a marvelous staff at the council. Um, and uh, we were able to do a great deal, especially with, with, during the time of the really sympathetic secretaries of state who were responsible for culture, like Maurice Lamontagne and Judy LaMarche. Judy could do more with the rest of the house. La Montagne was suspected by the house because he was an intellectual. Judy was a slob. And she played the slob. And nobody in the house would, would ever expect that Judy LaMarche, you see, would, would take on such a, such a highbrow thing as, as pleading for the arts, unless it was okay. <laughs> right, as you opposed see. to an intellectual pleading for the arts would be yeah. suspect, not okay, elitist, ab blah, blah, blah. Ab absolutely elitist, yes. Right. And that was w what was the trouble with La Montagne. He was a, a brilliant, brilliant man. But Judy, you know, got the, the National Arts Center through the House of Commons without a single dissenting vote. Wow. And I think it was largely because of this role that she played. I got to know her very well. And she was, um, she, she, she wore these extraordinary hats and, and glass frames and so on. And it was, it was all part of this playing the slob so the slobs would go along with her. <laughs> that, that part of it was, was fascinating. <coughs> and we were able to do much. Then, of course, the, at the same time, the um, American National Endowment started up, and we were able to give them a great deal of help. I was back and forth to Washington on several occasions. Then I undertook with Charles Lussier, who was the director of the council at the time, an international tour all through Europe and over to China uh, to talk about international trade. Uh, I, I put it in the context of international trade because that is how our government saw it. The Chinese saw it quite differently. The Chinese vice premier, uh, with, to whom I was introduced and uh, had a formal discussion with in China, had been in Canada. And uh, he, he said to me, nothing could be more important than uh, cultural exchange. Uh, <laughs> I was so surprised to hear this coming. It was I, I was expecting to put forward some notions about trade, which had come for the Canadian counterpart, and we had the the commercial attaché in Beijing sitting there taking notes like mad, and he really was surprised. And when I asked him as I got on the plane coming back to Canada, is there any message you want me to take back to Canada? He said, yes. Yeah. Will you please try and convince them 
for God's sake, that getting to know people has to come before doing business with them.